everybody. Um, this is Kara, obviously, uh, and I am just going to be making another quick Photoshop tutorial for you guys on how to get realistic looking blanket fade on images like this um, with blankets that have lots of lines or colors or both as this awesome blanket does. So I'm just going to open this up right away. This is a raw file because I do shoot in raw. Um, and this is completely straight out of camera. So what I'm doing is pretty much what you guys can do just straight out of camera with your photos. Um, so I'm just going to start working and kind of narrate what I'm doing and hopefully it turns out okay <laughs> because I don't really do these videos all that often so um, here goes and first of all I like to duplicate layers when I'm working with stuff like um, blurs just because then if I blur too much I can erase the top layer and the bottom layer will still be there um, if that makes sense so then I'm just going to take the lasso tool over here and, oh actually, you know what, I'm going to go to magnetic lasso. Zoom in a little bit so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Um, so go grab that magnetic lasso tool and just kind of start drawing where you think your blanket should start fading. And the reason why I like the magnetic lasso tool is because it'll, most of the time, hug the curves on the baby pretty well and for this you don't have to be exact because you're gonna be feathering a little bit and erasing where it's not perfect but this definitely helps get you pretty close so I'm just following the curve of the baby and then just sort of dragging where I think it looks good do 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 Alright, so then you should get, if we go back, you should get a, a selection that looks pretty much like this. Um, then you can just grab any selection tool, right click, feather, um, and then I'll probably feather by like 10. You don't want to feather a whole lot right here just because you're going to get um, really fuzzy looking lines around the baby otherwise and you want it to be somewhat natural looking. You want this final result to look like it just came out of your camera that way. Um, I was getting good blur back here but I kind of wanted to get just a little bit more. So that's why we're doing this. Um, so then you go up to filter, blur, and then lens blur is right in the middle here. And it'll bring up something like this and I already have my settings cranked way over here um, from previous photos because this is the sort of blur that I like but if you move radius around you can see how the background changes um, I'm just gonna crank it way up you can see it only affects the selected area and we'll work on blending these hard edges here in a little bit um, I don't really know why I chose pentagon as the shape. You can play around with the shapes of the iris and just see what you like. I think I decided that I like the pentagon shape best so that's just what I stuck to. Um, radius will affect your blur the most. You can also play around with blade curvature and you'll get slightly different blur from that. So just take some time and play around with these settings and see what works for you. Um, so the thing with lens blur is that it takes forever to load, at least on my computer, and my computer is a fairly new custom-built photography machine um, that I picked out the parts for and my boyfriend actually physically assembled for me, so it was super, super fast, like right after I built it, but now that I have hundreds of, gig of gigabytes of photos on here um, and lots of programs and stuff, Photoshop is not quite as fast. And I suppose I could add more RAM or upgrade to a solid state drive, but eh, I'll do that eventually. So we'll see how long this actually takes. If it takes forever, I might skip ahead um, and do some video editing, but I'm hope hoping I can just talk through it <laughs> because I'm feeling lazy and I don't want to have to edit this before I upload it. So we will see. All right, so lens blur has completed. So as you can see, you can toggle your top layer on and off 
to see the difference in blur there and I'm happy with this so I'm going to whoops deselect and you can see that the lines are still kind of hard around the baby because we only feathered by 10 pixels so usually at this point I make sure that I'm on the top layer here zoom in get out my handy dandy eraser brush some people are big fans of masking and more power to you if you're a masking sort of person but I don't know I just I taught myself how to use Photoshop and I saw the eraser tool and just started using that and that's how I do things but eh, it gets the job done so no matter how you do it it's it's all good so I'm just kind of erasing probably increase the size a little bit erasing around here so it's not such a dramatic hard line around the baby so baby kind of blends in a little bit more to the background now you don't want to erase where this hard blur line is here because then I well let's see if I can show you guys it just, it looks funny I don't know how to describe it it's like this weird in between blur actually that that doesn't look awful eh, I'm gonna control Z to go back anyway because <laughs> that's not usually not what I do um, usually what I do is I duplicate the layer again and then just grab your normal lasso tool and kind of do like a rough lasso around the area where that line is. Um, if you hold down shift on a PC you can select another selection over here without losing your other selection which is really fabulous and then I'm gonna feather. Um, let's feather by 75 pixels just see what that looks like. That should be good. And then we're just gonna do lens blur again. And what this does is it kind of gradually blurs your line rather than making it super, super harsh. And I'm going to bring down the radius so it's not super crazy blurry. Hit OK. Usually this lens blur effect doesn't take quite as long to process because you're not processing half of the image, just a small selection. So it's still kind of slow, but whatevs. Almost, almost, almost. Come on. There we go. All right, so then you'll get something like that. And then I right click to deselect and Zoom in out. I think that looks pretty darn good. I'm just going to do control E to merge these top two layers here so I can toggle back and forth and show you the before and the after. And that is how you achieve kind of realistic looking blanket fade with lots of colorful lines or backgrounds um, using my method of the lens blur tool. And I hope that was helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I will try to help you out as best as I can. Alright, thanks so much for watching.